Hey everybody, this is Dr. Langdon again with a short video explaining part of the journey to becoming a physician. So, you know, when I entered medical school, no one in my family was a physician or really even any advanced uh, college or, you know, graduate level degrees. So it was a whole new world for us. And I thought there may be some folks out there related to a medical student who may not understand uh, all the detailed parts of this journey. So today I'm just going to talk about one part of that, and that is the match. So this is very confusing for those outside of medicine. It's hard enough for those who are in it. And it's very different now than it was when I was a student 30 years ago. So what happens is we start working with students in their third year to work up their application for residency. So residency is what you do after you graduate from medical school and it's within your chosen field. For example, surgery, general surgery is five years of residency. Um, OBGYN, four years. Internal medicine, three. Family medicine, three. Uh, emergency medicine, four. Did I say that one already? Uh, pediatrics is three. Um, there are a lot of obviously different ones, uh, psychiatry, all different pathology, all sorts of different things you can do after medical school within the medical field. Well, in the same way that the student, uh, before they graduated from college, if they were applying for medical school, didn't know where they would be living the following year, depending on where they would get into medical school, same for medical students applying to residency. So they start working on their applications in third year, and then over that summer, uh, right between third and fourth year, uh, the department chairs for the students who are going into, so in my case, for the students who are going into pediatrics, we collect their personal statement. We get a transcript of their all their medical school time. Uh, we get their CV, and uh, we meet with them several times to help prepare them for this process. Well, they we recommend that they apply to multiple programs, of course, and then they get uh, interviews with these programs. This year, the interviews were still all on Zoom which has been sort of a leftover from COVID, but it does save a lot of money from having to pay for airfare around the country to interview at all these various programs. And so uh, this past year was all Zoom interviews. And this exactly right now in February is when the students are beginning to submit their rank list. So here's how it works. All the programs that interviewed a particular student, uh, they get to rank all the students they interviewed. So say you are the pediatric resident residency program director at UNC or Duke or ECU or Wake Forest or in Charlotte, North Carolina. Those are the five in North Carolina. And um, you interviewed X number of students. I don't know. We'll say you interviewed 300 students. Well, that program gets to make a list of its preferred students. So the very top notch student that they interviewed is one on the list on down, right? Well, then let's say you have an individual student and they interviewed, maybe they applied to 40 programs and they decided to interview at 20 of them. Well, this is the time of the year when the students submit their rank list, meaning their very top program they would list as number one, their second favorite, their third favorite, etc. Well, then coming up soon, so exciting but nerve-wracking, on March 11th this year, uh, we will have uh, announcements of anyone who did not make the match, but not exactly where they did match to. This is totally different from when I was in school. And then that Friday, March the 15th, they'll all find out to where exactly, precisely uh, they have been matched to. So understand if you have any of these uh, now fourth-year medical students in your life, that they do not know where they will live next year until March 15th of this spring. Isn't that wild? And so then they have to prepare to uh, either get out of their current lease or rental, you know, situation they have, and then they have to either purchase a home where they're going or find a new apartment where they're going in a different state usually. So it's a really exciting but stressful time for these fourth year medical students. So if you have any in your life, uh, please be extra kind and supportive to them and say a prayer for them. And, and we are all just at this point, just hoping and praying and fingers crossed that uh, all of the students that we advise uh, all get good matches that make them happy. And it's a very serious thing for the students who do match maybe to a place that wasn't their very top choice, it is a contractual obligation that they will serve, do their residency at that program. So it's really a big deal. It's a big deal around the country if certain programs have slots that aren't filled, or it's certainly a huge life-changing problem if a student doesn't match at all. We do have a little bit of a backup program for that called SOAP, the week 
It's a supplemental um, application system that week from the Monday through the Friday of match week in which uh, all the schools scramble to get all of their students matched to appropriate programs. Uh, so it is a very exciting but stressful time of year for all medical schools and all faculty at medical schools and particularly program directors and fourth year medical students. So keep everyone in your prayers and best of luck to all the fourth year medical students out there.